Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining us. We are broadcasting live from Children's Hospital and Medical Center, and today we are taking you inside Children's new hybrid heart catheterization lab. And this is really significant and exciting for the patients and families we serve, because this is the first of its kind for kids in the country. So our guide today is Dr. Jeff Delaney, who is the Director of Interventional Cardiology here. Thanks for showing us around. My pleasure. Yep, and we are live and taking your questions. So if you have questions for Dr. Delaney as we look around, just put those in the space below and we'll answer them as we can. So most people, this is not a familiar environment no. too. So just explain what is done in here, what's the work done in here, and why is it so vital to the children that we care for? Sure. So this room is designed to be both a full service cardiothoracic operating room and it is a complete interventional catheterization suite. So we can do anything from a standard uh, open surgical procedure for heart surgery, or we can do any of our wide array of diagnostic and interventional catheter procedures, including making pressure measurements and assessing valve disease and, and heart function, to treating problems such as closing holes, uh, opening up obstructed blood vessels, all of that can be done within this room, and it can be done either in isolation or with the assistance of surgery working as a team. So this is brand new, a brand new space, a brand new system. What makes this so cutting edge and makes it best for the kids? Yeah. Well, first of all, the room is excellent. The room is big. We have uh, at least a thousand square feet that we're working with, which for one of these rooms is really nice to have all the different types of equipment you might need. For any given case. The other thing that makes this really unique and special is that this is a hybrid articulating arm x-ray system from Siemens Medical Systems which has not been used in a congenital application previously but it allows you to have it completely out of the operative field and then come in when you want to take images during surgery or if you're doing a catheterization it allows you to do a absolutely outstanding image quality at a faster speed, which, and if you can image at a faster speed, you're using less radiation and less contrast, and you're getting better information more quickly. Wow, so it just kind of parks in the corner. Kind of describe how it works. If you were, you know, you're all coming here to do the procedure, how that would look. Right, well, as you just saw a moment ago, it was in its parked position sitting over there in the corner. And then when you program it to come up to the table, it has four different articulating joints along that arm that allow it to rotate and spin into the field with sensors all around it that will not let it run into things uh, at any speed as a safety measure. Mm -hmm. We can then take it anywhere on a complete arc around the patient to image to obtain the best angle to perform an intervention. All right, that's amazing. Okay, so here it was starting to spin a little bit there. Okay. So, so what we're doing here is these are three of, uh, members of our team that are cardiovascular radiation specialists. And what they're demonstrating is a, uh, what we do is a three-dimensional rotational angiography. So they're demonstrating the way they would set the cameras to do a continuous rotating angiogram that will then allow us to be transmitted immediately to our uh, computer system and reconstructed so that we can get a complete three-dimensional model of the patient. Wow, so yeah, just describe what's up on that screen right so now. So what's up on the screen is a, is a heart model that we have done a three-dimensional rotational spin on that shows us the heart the aorta, the blood vessels, and this aorta has a narrowing called coarctation of the aorta, which is one of the congenital lesions we treat commonly. And this allows us to then isolate where is the narrowing most severe, which camera angle shows it completely, mm -hmm. and then all of the systems talk to each other, allowing you to set the cameras to directly go to that image. And you can then overlay that image onto your live display so that you can work entirely within this uh, image set without stepping on fluoro uh, only for the bare minimum. So you deliver a very low radiation dose for the most amount of energy and can work 
more exactly within the patient. And it just sounds, you know, less radiation, the better, mm -hmm. but explain why that is significant for patients and, and recovery and, and their whole experience sure. in this process. All of the x-ray systems now work at a much lower dose than older systems. So all of the companies have gotten extremely good at limiting the radiation dose, but radiation is harmful. Uh, and if you use it in high doses, it can cause burns like sunburns and it can cause more damage even at the end all be a risk for malignancy. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep the radiation dose to an absolute minimum. This system and this process allows us to do that. And it's extremely important because a lot of our children have cardiac disease of the greatest severity. And so they may need multiple catheterizations over the course of their lifetime. So if each individual time we bring them in this yeah. room, we can work at the lowest possible dose. We're really doing them a favor over time by keeping that dose low, the cumulative dose. Yeah, because it, add, it adds up. So give people a sense of like, when you're doing a procedure in here and we met some of your team, like what's happening back there? Sure. And then how many people are in this room for a heart catheterization procedure? Sure, let's, um, let's spin the camera to like a 30 degree uh, angle like we would for, to demonstrate anesthesia room. So when, we have a, when we're set up to do a heart catheterization, we're gonna have a complete cardiothoracic anesthesia team that's in the room that's assisting us take care of the patient. So we'll have an anesthesiologist, and then and that will be up at the head of the bed, off to the left of the bed. And we'll have an anesthesia machine, the anesthesiologist, and an anesthesia tech. Mm -hmm. We then have our team, which involves myself and one of our cardiovascular specialists, working at the table, mm -hmm. performing the procedure. We then have a circulating uh, specialist that is uh, retrieving medicines and equipment, working both for us and for the anesthesia And they're team. over here. And they're throughout all the room, over. all over the room. Each one of these cabinets is going to be completely loaded with different size wires, equipment, catheters. Wow. All of it's special in the hospital, other than our second room that we're building. So all none of our equipment is used anywhere else. So we house it all directly here. What about back here? So back here is the control room. So the control room is the really the command center of all of these different cameras and x-ray systems. As you look around, you see that we've got this, this very large computer display in front of the table. Mm -hmm. That has, has as many as six different programmable fields where we can do <clears throat> multiple views of the x-ray system, the three-dimensional reconstructions, the pressure monitoring, the anesthesia vital signs. We can plug in ultrasound to be real time at the same time and we can use those in conjunction with these monitors to also show live camera feeds into the room these can also be transmitted into the other cardiac operating room so that the surgeons can be updated on a case we're doing or look at something even if they are uh, not able to leave their room at that moment mm -hmm. so all of all of this equipment is coordinated and controlled through a series of computers that is within, the, within that control room. And when our second room is completed, we're going to have a second room that's as large as this on the opposite side of that control room with identical setups, other than we're changing the x-ray system a little to make it so that we have two different systems and can do things slightly differently in each room. So better images. Better images. Better for the kids. Just to, to bring it back to just how this really is going to impact kids' lives and improve, mm -hmm. um, improve things, how many kids do we do heart catheterizations on in, in a week, in a year? Right. Well, our volume right now, total, if you include our electrophysiology specialists mm -hmm. and our cases, is just over 500 cases per year. And so that averages down to between 10 and 15 cases per week. So two to three per day. And unlike um, a lot of adult cardiac catheterizations, which might be a 30 to a 45 minute procedure if the anatomy is normal and there's no difficulties found, we have to remember that all of our patients have unique cardiac anatomy mm -hmm. and some of them are extraordinarily small. And when you're working in a very small space, your room for error is very limited. And so our procedures typically take between two hours and as long as five to six hours. And so we've got a lot of delicate maneuvers we have to make inside a baby's heart. Mm -hmm. And so this system allows us to 
know where we are most completely without ongoing use of the x-ray system, making it safer and better for the patient over the long haul. And it's right here in Omaha, the first of its, it's time right for kids. First time this exactly. system has been used in a congenital cath lab in the world, not wow. just in the United States. And it's, it, it's, really, it's really exciting. And you know, people think when they think of children, they think of clinical care, exceptional clinical care, first and foremost. But we are also invested in research and education. Mm -hmm. And I have to think this is also, this is great for patient care, but it's great for research and education too. How does that work? Absolutely. We've been, we've been talking to semen since we decided to move the bar with this kind of an x-ray system. Mm -hmm. We are firmly committed and believe that the next generation of cardiac cath labs are going to rely nearly exclusively on the fusion of imaging between non-invasive imaging like magnetic resonance and CT with active x-ray and even echo. This system can do all of those things and we will be the lab that is designing the protocols, writing the, the methodology on how to make that worse, work most efficiently. Everyone is really excited about the direction we're going mm -hmm. uh, and what we can do with this. This system, for example, the, the three-dimensional spin that you just saw, a standard x-ray system that's available today would perform that image set in six seconds. And you're imaging the entire time and you're injecting contrast the entire time. This system does that same spin in three and a half seconds. So it's, it's half um, for a better image quality, lower dose, lower contrast. And then the fusion technology of the computer systems is outstanding. So this is a, a prime example of innovation at work. Mm -hmm. How for you does this, this example of innovation connect to children's greater vision? Well, children's has always been with the child's health first. Yeah. They've, they've never been afraid to move forward and, and be a part of the next wave of technology. And that's why we have such a tremendous hospital system um, in a city the size of Omaha that we can compete on the same playing field with all of the much larger cities in the United States. They've, they've always embraced that, that if you're going to take care of the sickest patients and have them come to Omaha, not leave Omaha, and that's exactly what's happening. We're getting referrals from all over the country. Then you have to have the best facilities, the best people, and a pervasive approach that allows you to, to take care of everything. Why is this work so rewarding for you? I didn't tell you I was gonna ask that. Yeah. It's kind of a I mean, personal question, it, but well, it's pretty amazing. Um, Pediatric and congenital cardiology is a remarkable field. Nothing the children did caused their problem. Mm, yeah. It's an artifact of, of uh, a malformation when they were born. Something went wrong. You have a tremendously motivated set of parents. Mm -hmm. They absolutely will go to the mat for their children. And, and oftentimes, depending on the disease, we need them to. And the children are brave and they, they take everything in stride. You know, it's a, it's a incredibly rewarding field because it's a roller coaster because the children can be just as sick as anything you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. But when one of those children that was really on the edge, you see several years later and they're happy and thriving and playing, it's, it just takes your breath away. Nothing's better. Right. It doesn't get better than that. So anything um, else? Know, you want to say to parents I mean there's we know from comments when we let people know we were going to do this we heard from people saying love Dr. Delaney or you know <laughs> they have heart kiddos at home like what would you tell them about you know yes this cath lab but just yeah. in general what just do you want that, them to know just that our team this is this is one demonstration of how invested our team the cardiac the cardiac service line and the hospital in general is invested in their children and how we're taking it to the next level. This is absolutely what they can expect from us every single day, nothing but the best, and we'll, we'll keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for your expertise and your time today. My pleasure. Because uh, this is very, very exciting. And you know, this, this is why we're growing. We're growing right. to continue to be the very best for patients and families because they deserve it.
like you said. So thank you guys so much for joining us. And we know you're here on Facebook, but you can follow Children's on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube too. And you can find us online at Children's Home.